I love Thailand. There's even kids there, isn't there? What are like eight, nine, ten years old? What are fighting four times a month and they're the bread earner for the family? I was like 27 the first time I went over there. They, they start you out training with like the little 12 year old kids. And we're like, oh man, these are kids. And then they grab you and it's like, oh my God. Oh, imagine. <laughs> Hello everyone, what is happening? We're back, chatting pony with Paddy the Baddy, another episode, and today I have Kevin, the soul assassin Ross, lad. Introduce yourself, but I have to say, that is one of the finest nicknames I have ever heard in my life. That is brilliant, <laughs> lad. Wait, before you introduce yourself, where Thanks, did that man. nickname come from? Because that's that's great. Yeah, I I, I think so. <laughs> so my, uh, that actually... That actually was given to me my very first professional fight, which was in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a real quick story about it. I, I took the fight on two weeks' notice. It was against their champion down there who already had, I think, like 30 fights under his belt. He just lost his very first fight, so they pretty much were bringing me out there to get his confidence back. And then we had this crazy blood fest war like a lot of my fights typically are and i just kept walking through everything that he was doing and ended up knocking him out in the fourth round and then afterwards as i was walking back to the locker room this this, this uh, mexican gentleman came up to me and he, he basically said that's that's what my nickname should be because he was like it looked like you destroyed his soul you took his soul away from him and he, c he couldn't take anymore and he said it's like you're the soul assassin and then it just stuck like that that that's no what? No what the funny thing about that is? I thought it was gonna be like the different type of like soul assassin, like you come out to a soul tune dancing or something. Know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so that that explanation <laughs> is ten times better. That's brilliant. Just taking people's yeah, soul away from them in a in a five round fight. Yeah, and that's kinda you know, the the way that I fought was always in that way where I'm I'm trying I was always trying to make people want to quit as opposed to just knocking them out. I always felt like Anybody can get knocked out, but to, to make someone give up on themselves because they can't take anymore was always my mentality going in. And I knew I would never quit. So it was always like, I'm gonna, I'm never going to give up and I'm going to make sure you want to give up. Yeah, that's... I like to think I'm a bit like that myself. I like to, I'd, I'd like to think that myself. I think I could out-heart anyone, you <laughs> know what I mean? So that's yeah. brilliant to hear, yeah. to be honest. Thank you. But uh, yeah, let's go. I, will, I always go back to the start with people. So obviously you're a Muay Thai fighter, you fought all different sorts of styles, kickboxing, even had to go with MMA and stuff like that. But where did you, was you fighting when you was a kid? You know what I mean? Was you on the street fighting as a young lad or did you just get into like martial arts? No, you know, I, I actually hated violence growing up, ironically. I, I was always very intrigued by it though. You know, I, I for myself... I didn't like the kind of emotional thing, like people being angry at each other, but I like the competitiveness about it. You know, I, I was always very athletic, but I hated, I hated team sports. I hated having to rely on other people. And I always thought about fighting, you know, it was like, oh, wow, it's just, it's just you and the other guy in there. You know, you know, you don't have a team to rely on or anyone to back you up. Um, so it was something that always intrigued me. Uh, I thought about boxing for a long time, um, but I was I love martial arts too, you know. And I never really saw any any fighting that that was similar to boxing, where they're just you know real fighting. It was always kind of point sparring and that kind of thing when it came to uh, martial arts fighting. And then one day in '95, um, I was in Vegas. I was watching ESPN at like two o'clock in the morning, and a Muay Thai fight came on. And I was just like, this is everything that I've been looking for. I was just blown away. And, you know, I'd never seen anything like that. Uh, it still took me almost 10 years to actually get started. But <laughs> that's what really triggered that, you know. And it was always something that was in the back of my mind. Like, I'm going to do this one day. But, you know, I was too busy partying and pissing my life away and all that stuff. And, never, you know, using all those excuses that everybody gives themselves. Like, I can't. I'm never going to be able to do it. I'm never going to be able to make it. I already felt like I was too old at the time. I was just a teenager, you know. Um, but then one day I was just like, you know, how much of your life have you wasted already? And, and just because you're afraid to do this thing, you know, I realized that all that stuff really just boiled down to fear. You know, I was afraid all these excuses that I had are just, you're just afraid. So I, I finally, um, uh, just made up my mind and I was like, I'm gonna go after this regardless of what happens and never look back. So is that... But is that what the gap was down to? Because you say you saw her in 95. And when did you have your first fight? Did you say 2003? 
I was 23. Yeah, so so 2003. Yeah. So what was was fight, that? September. What was the gap? That's an eight year gap. Uh, how come you yeah. never got into it sooner? Uh, as I said, it was it was all those it was all those excuses I was giving myself. You know that I couldn't make it. Um, you know that I was too, I, I was I felt like I was I was too weak. I was too skinny. You know, it's like I'm not I'm not I never thought of myself as that kind of person because I didn't I like I said I hated I didn't like violence. I didn't I hated when I saw people like angry at each other and upset at each other. But I loved I loved that kind of physicality of it. You know, and it, it was just something that I mean. When it all came down to it, I think it just it just scared me. You know, I wasn't I wasn't ready to give up what I would have to give up in order to do this. You know, I was going to have to stop partying. I was going to have to start drinking. I mean, I was a full blown alcoholic by the time I was probably twenty years old. You know, so that was such a huge thing I was going to have to do, and I I just I didn't think I would would be able to do it. You know, I thought everyone was going to laugh at me. I, I mean, I didn't even take myself seriously. So I, I never even told anybody about this. Um, one one of my friends was the only person I ever told, and you know he actually encouraged me. He was like, why don't why don't you do it? And, you know, I gave him all those excuses and everything, but um, he was like, I think you should. Uh, and it, it, he actually ended up passing away in 99. And when he died, I, I promised myself that I, that I would do this, but his death sent me really <laughs> over the edge of that, that dark road I was already on, you know, and I, I, it, it got really bad for a couple of years. And every time I would see a fight, it was like it sparked that, that thing in me. It was like, you're wasting your life. You're not going after this. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? And uh, one day, uh, it was going into uh, 2003. I, was, I almost got in this near-death car accident. I was inches away from what would have been a near-death car accident. And I realized, like, I, I shouldn't even be alive anymore, you know. And I looked at how much of my life that I had wasted, and I just... I couldn't, I couldn't live like that anymore. You know, I was like, it doesn't matter how many doubts you have, how many fears you had, all the reasons you have not to go after this. You're either going to go one direction or the other, and you know where that other direction is going to lead you. You know, you're, you're not going to make it out of that road. So I just, just was like, all right, let's go. So I started going that way, and you know, I just, just, just embrace those fears. You know, it's like we feel like the people that go after things aren't afraid. Like they don't have nerves, they don't have doubts. You know, you see everybody in the spotlight, like they don't have, they don't deal with the same things that you deal with, with where a lot of times they deal with way, way worse stuff, you know. Um, so it's just, just learning that you have to embrace that and you have to face that and you have to move forward regardless of how you feel. It was that, That's what took me so long to finally get started and just, all right, we got to do it. Well, to be honest, that, that story was so inspirational. Thank you for sharing. But um, hey, my pleasure. like... I have a lot of people who watch this podcast who uh, I always get comments on that, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to, and literally the, what you've just said is a prime example, know what I mean? You just said to yourself, you need to wake, wake up and realise the opportunities that you've got in front of you. You mightn't even be here in, in, a, in a few weeks, you never know, literally a car crash could happen. One of your best friends got took away from you and, like that and it made you realise. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I mean that, and that was something that kept me motivated that through all all my fights, all the ups and downs, all the crazy people I went up against. It was like you're not supposed to be here anyway. You're supposed to be dead. You have an opportunity every every moment of every day to to give it everything that you have. Um, and you never know where you're going to end up. Like I never thought I was going to have one fight, and here I am, 22 years later, with 75 fights and all the things that I did. But every every time was like. You know, it was all a very surreal thing for me. You know, this whole experience has been very surreal. It's almost felt like once I turned my life around, everything was has felt like a dream since then because it was, it's so different than who I was that first half of my life. You know, I was very, very quiet, very shy, very just depressed and weak. I mean, my parents split up when I was very, very young. We moved constantly, so I, I never had any stability in my life, and it was just like constant, like just chaos and just that that acceptance of the, of the way that things are, and that that victim mentality of I don't have a choice. This is just this is just the way life is, you know. Like you're not gonna get shit, um, you're not gonna have anything in life. Just just accept it, you know. Not taking into account like you have to work for the things that you want, you, and you have to. You have to face those fears that you have. Not it's not just the people who 
are given these things that become successful. It's not the people that don't have these doubts and don't have these fears. They, everybody has them. Everybody deals with the same thing uh, in one regard or another. You know, we all have something to deal with, but unfortunately, we always we always view the things that people have that we don't, and we say, oh, if I only had that. Be like, yeah, but you also have to take everything they have as well. Like, you don't see what they're dealing with. You only see the result of what they were able to accomplish, not what they had to go through, not all the failures they had to go through, not just grinding and day in, day out, not not living in a gym for three years, not not getting the kicked out of them every day by, by everyone around them. And then eventually they were able to build up and grow and go through it. Um, and that kind of process never ends. You know, that journey never ends. Yeah, you're not wrong there. As you say, like you said, you've been fighting and training for 22 years. I've been tra training for 12, fighting for like 11, 10, and I feel like I go in the gym and learn something new every other day. Like you, yeah. You're never yeah. not learning when you go into a gym. That's why I always encourage people to get involved in some sort of martial arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like that, uh, you realize that that journey never ends because there's no, there's no end point to that progression. There's no point you get to and be like, oh, I'm really great now. I'm like, you're never great. <laughs> you're good. And, and, and like how much it takes just to stay at the level that you're at is, a, is so much, you know, and then it just, it just, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know anything. It's like the higher up you get, the more you realize you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, sometimes I'm in the gym and I'm thinking to myself, have I remember, have I, like forgot more than I even know now because we do that many different things you know what I mean I'm striking yeah. I'm wrestling I'm doing jujitsu I'm grappling like it's the amount of different things in fact you'll understand you've fought MMA haven't you yeah yeah I had one MMA fight I had boxing fights I had two San Shao fights the kickboxing fights Muay Thai fights it was one of those things like I, I just knew that you had you need to stay active and busy and it, when I was coming up it was it was impossible for me to get fights especially once I hit a certain level uh, in this country, um, there was just no no one for me to fight anymore, and that's why I was fighting people that were like thirty pounds heavier than me. I was taking uh, boxing fights on two days' notice. I was just like, I, I need to fight. I need to stay active. Uh, I need to keep progressing, and the only way to do that is is to stay in there. You know, it's like you can only do so much in the gym. It doesn't matter. You can train this sport for twenty years, but until you actually get in the ring, you you don't know anything. We just we have this false sense of our ability levels till you get tested in the fire, you know, and then it's like, all right, well, that was that person. It's like the people that are, they become the best in the gym and they think that's like an accomplishment. Like, yeah, well, it depends where you set your bar. Like you're the best in the gym. All right. Now you're the best in the state. Then you're the best in the country. Then the best in the world. And like, then the best of all time. And that's kind of where I always set my bar was the greatest fighters of all time. That that's what I'm looking to. And I'm like, I'm no one. I'm, I'm never going to be there. So everything I'm doing is to get closer to that goal that as I can. I never felt like I accomplished anything. I was like, oh, I beat this person now. Now I'm great. I, I never felt that way. I always maintained that that day one mentality, and that's what kept me motivated and pushing all these years. Is is the fact that I never I never did feel like I accomplished anything. You know, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot of stuff, but. You know, it's like one one starting so late was always a big motivator for me. It's like not starting until I was 23. I was like, I, I like wasted so much of my life because I was afraid. Like think of how much farther I could have been if I didn't wait this long to start. So it was always that like trying to play catch up. Every time I was in the gym, it was like 100%. I'm focused on this moment in and out of the gym as well. You know, it's it's not just the moments you're training. It's what are you doing on the outside too? Yeah, I, I can know exactly what you mean with that one as well because I'd done it myself for years. I was going out partying all the time and then coming in the gym. I was burning a candle at both ends and it, when I was younger, leading up, I sort of missed out like when I was like 22, 23, but leading up to that point, I was I was just out every weekend doing stupid stuff, drinking, partying, and it ended up catching up with me, you know what I mean? And I was struggling yeah. to make weight and I was losing, I lost a fight or two and I always put that down to being an idiot and going out and like at least you got that out of your system you know what I mean that was all out of your system you <laughs> yeah. didn't have to worry about that was, it then that was, that was actually the really that was the very beneficial thing about starting so late was I got all that out of the way it was like all that all that stuff you know I mean a lot of people when they start when they're young they have to go through that process as they're training and it, it can be really difficult and you do end up wasting a lot of time where once I started 
I was completely focused on getting better, knowing how much of my life I did wasted. I, I had no time to piss off or, or, you know, it's like after a fight, I, w- I was right back in the gym right away. I didn't, I didn't take, I never took breaks ever. And, and everybody else that did, I kind of saw their lack of progression because, you know, they would fight, they would do really well, and then they would disappear for a month and then come back. And like, you're always trying to play catch up to where you were. You know, it's like I always use that analogy. It's like we're on a train. As soon as you step off, that train keeps going. Now you're trying to get back on it and get back to where you were. So the longer you take off, get off that train, the, the farther back you're going to be and the, and the less progression you're going to have. So I was always moving. Even, even during injuries and stuff, it was like there's always something that you can do. I think the, the problem is when, when injuries happen, when di- losses happen and difficulties happen, we stop progressing because because we completely step away from it at where like you can always work on your mind you can always work on like your flexibility you can always work on your conditioning right? it's not like you have to grind in the gym day in and day out because there's so much more that can be done to help you progress than just just doing this this really difficult thing and as i developed i kind of started to understand how much more there is to it than just that work in the gym yeah, I know exactly what you mean there because I've I've had three wrist surgeries to be honest, and yeah, like on the when I've had them, I've just had to work around. I've had to come in the gym and kick and just use the other hand, and obviously you can't grapple yeah. with it and stuff. But I could still kick, I could knee, I could elbow, I could throw me other hand, and mm-hmm. you just have to work around it, as you say, don't you? And I think personally, as you just said, mentally it helps a lot because it knows you can you can oh, push yeah. through anything if you can get in the gym and train and work your ass off when you've got an injury then no one can stop you in a fight if, you, if you've got the mental capacity for that. Yeah, without question, man. And it's like when uh, I think because of that, like when I blew my knee out and had, had my knee, knee surgery, I think just that mentality and just getting right back in the gym, it's like your blood flowing's a little bit, your mentality's a little bit better. That helped me uh, heal that much quicker. I went from the day of my surgery to the day of my fight was, I think it was nine months and one week and so after blowing my ACL out and I mean that was pretty pretty fast and so much of that was just because of my mindset and my uh, willingness to work even though there was this injury that happened there, there's there's always something that you can do even if you're like stuck in a bed and like a full body cast like your your mind can still work you can still not use this external thing as a reason to quit and so much of that is applicable to all things in life you know we all look at these circumstance these unfair circumstances and we think we're we're like everything's over or the world's against us but what can you be doing right now there's always something that you can be doing in the moment no matter how bad things are yeah i always say that as well with like obviously we're talking about injuries like wrist and uh, your knee and stuff but i always say for like your mental health going the gym is such a like yeah. whenever i get on the mat whether it's rolling whether it's sparring whether it's wrestling Every other problem I have, it's it's gone. You know what I mean? It just yeah. it just yeah. goes over your head. You don't have another problem in the world. And I always recommend people to do it. And I, it's it's something that I'm passionate about. You know what I mean? And you're obviously the same. Yeah. I can I can feel it just by talking to you. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like fighting for me was it was my therapy. It was my. Uh, um, you know, like giving up drinking and everything. Like I, di- I didn't go to meetings. I didn't go to any, any kind of rehab or anything like fighting for me is my rehab. It is my therapy. It is, it is my hospital. It is my, uh, it is my family. It's like, it's like all those, those things. And when you have that, it, it lets you express those feelings of negativity. Maybe that, that build up, you know, a lot of people don't. So they're like sitting in their car and they're like yelling at people like, yeah. <laughs> But then when, when, you, when, you're, when you're getting that out every day, constantly getting that out, constantly going through difficult circumstances, having to overcome, having to get beat up and like recover from that and, and, and all that stuff is, is so applicable to every aspect of life. It's like every life lesson you need is in the gym and, you're, and, and, and everything else becomes easy. It like clears away, it clears out the noise of everything and it lets you really see what, what's important, what's not, what, what's a big thing, what's not. You know, it's like you're not so reactive. You're not so emotionally responsive to, to things that happen because you can take a moment. You've been in the fire. You've been in the chaos. And now it's like, so when this really bad thing happens, like we instinctually have this emotional response. But once you've done that so many times, day in and day out, um, 
you, you see a little bit clearer, you can think a little bit better, and you can you have a better perspective on the situation. Not just it's not just what it seems in the moment because we're so reactive to stuff. That's where a lot of us get into get into trouble or, or fall into depression because of that. Because it's this thing that happened. It's like oh, the world's ending or, or everything's terrible. We're like all right, yeah, maybe. But but like you gotta just just neutralize yourself and, and get into a place of peace. And when you're exerting yourself so much every day, it it, it it's kind of strips that away from you, and you, you don't have that emotional response all the time. And, and you can you can think a little bit clearer. So like when I'm not in the gym, like I, I feel that start to that weight start to come in on me. It's like all right, you better like at least go for a run or something or do some sit ups because if I don't, man, it's it's like I can I can recognize right away what happens if I don't. So I know that this is going to be forever. It's going to be my entire life. I might have to do a little bit of something. It's like, yeah, I'm not fighting anymore, but I'm still working out every day. I'm still training every day. I'm still, um, you know, at least moving every day. It's like once we stop moving, everything just like shuts down. Our body stops working. Our mind stops working. uh, Our emotions stop working. You you just got to keep everything in flow and in movement and everything else tends to work out a little bit better. Yeah, perfect. I couldn't have said it better, to be honest. Well, once to move on and ask you to, because you've, as you said, you've boxed, you've done MMA, you've done Muay Thai, you've done all sorts. What's the most difficult out of them all for you personally? Uh, oh, Muay Thai without question. Yeah. <laughs> I would say Muay Thai is the most, uh, it's the most painful out of everything. Uh, you know, it's like, because a lot of things, like when you talk about boxing, it's like, yeah, your head's getting, your head gets pretty bashed in, in, in your body a little bit too, but you, you can walk afterwards, <laughs> which is nice. Um, you know, and in MMA, of course, that always depends on what kind of fight it was, you know, but you do have the option to kind of go to the ground, you have the option to wrestle, you have the option uh, kind of to choke people out, and it's like, I've never been through a Muay Thai fight and not been injured to some degree as afterwards, you know, unless I just went out there and knocked him out. But I've never had one where I got out and I'm like, oh, I feel great. I can, I can just go for a walk today. It's like, you just got ran over by a truck. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty horrific in that way, but that's also why I love it so much. You know, it's, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody. Um, and I think that's, that's what uh, is so attractive about it for me. It's, it's like this, it's just like a little bit different than a lot of these other things. It's, it's um, you know, you, I think you have a, have a different kind of mentality when it comes to Muay Thai. Yeah, I'll and be honest. And there no fucking money in it too, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm so happy that you've just said Muay Thai because when boxers say to me, oh, that MMA, oh, that's, I couldn't do that, that's a man's sport, that, and I just turn to people and go, have you ever watched a Muay Thai fight? It's like, that's a man sport. They stand in front of each other like they're in a telephone yeah. box and punch, kick, knee and elbow each other yeah. until one can't walk or his head split open or so, or they're unconscious. <laughs> yeah, and that then it's also that that mentality is kind of kind of ingrained in us too is is that sense of like I can take more than you. I'm going to cause you more damage. Um, you know, it's 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 one of those those sports that you know they kind of frown away from people running around and, and moving out of the way and being over overly slick. I think so. There, there's something a little. It's just a little different. I you know I don't know I don't know what it is, but that's what always I was always drawn to it because as I said I, I love all all fighting. You know it's like if I can't do Muay Thai, any fighting is better than no fighting for me. I'll I'll go fence or <laughs> you know do some kind of uh, grappling tournaments or anything like that. You know I was always. I just want to. I just want to compete in a physical way. Yeah, like I, I always found the Thai scoring mad because I've fought Thai myself. I've got the worst Thai record ever. I only ever fought mm-hmm. amateur. I, I'm zero <laughs> wins, three losses. Oh, yeah. um, but nice. like I always found like the scoring system, like because one of the fights I thought I won, but because he caught me kick through it yeah. in the fourth round and kicked me in the back, he won the fight. And I, I was just... Oh, yeah. What? I was landing punches and kicks, what yeah, do you mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 very, it's very differently. The, the scoring criteria is, is extremely different than, say, like kickboxing, where it's just who hits the other person more, <laughs> who gets knocked down more. Um, you know, it's, it's very specified to Muay Thai. It's up, particularly in Thailand. It's, 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 it, 
you know, it's, I mean, you have to go through a lot of training to really understand it. I and mean, even as a fighter myself, um, you know, there were times I, I, it's like you try to fight a certain way so the judges see it in a certain way. But, but even that it's, it's very, uh, it's very subjective, you know, it's like all fighting is, you know, how many times have you seen fights where like, oh, there's no way. So it's like one time I actually tried to fight in a way that was going to be scored in that criteria, but it's like, I didn't feel good about it. I don't want to win a fight like that. Like, I want to fight the way that I fight. And if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. I don't really give a shit about what the score is. I'm, I'm just going to fight my ass off and then see what happens. Because for myself, it's like, I'd rather look back and be, be proud of what I did in there. It's like, just because you win a fight, just because you win a title, what does that even really mean to you? And I, I guess that's just my perspective and, and the way that I look at things. And that's probably why I, I always fought the way that I did. I didn't really care about necessarily the who's going to win or lose at the end. It was like, I want to fight and I want to be proud of what I did in there. I want to fight with all of my heart and fight my way, my style, the way that feels good to me. If some people think I lost, that, that's just one, that's just somebody's opinion. I mean, it's really only three people's opinions. Uh, of what of what it is anyway it's very it's a subjective thing scoring fights is very subjective unless you get knocked out you know yeah you're right there I've seen so many robberies in MMA lately one of my friends got robbed about a week ago chasing it's a uh, it's horrible to see yeah. but as you say it really is just subjective people's opinions and it can ruin people's careers though can't it literally if one of someone's opinion yeah. is like if there's a stupid opinion yeah. it can ruin people's careers yeah, and it become it becomes very uh, it, people get so emotional about it too. It can really mess with people's mindsets. But it, it's like if you just understand how how subjective it is, and how many people have been screwed over throughout the years. Like you're not special just because you had a bad decision in your fight. Like it, it happens all the time, you know. But every time it happens, we act like we're the only person it's ever happened to, and or this is the worst robbery ever. I'm like, yeah, probably not. And uh, and again. The good thing, especially now, you know, it's like when I was coming up, you couldn't even see these freaking fights. They weren't on TV. They weren't on anything. Uh, now, at least at least everyone can see what happens in there just because the judges sco maybe scored it differently. I don't really, I don't give a shit what the judge says. I, I want to know what do the people think? You know, what do the fans think? What do, what do my peers think about this fight? The, most judges are pretty uneducated as it is. So I don't really care what some person that's never fought before thinks about my fight <laughs> i care about what real fighters think about my fight what i think about my fight and then from there everything else is just you know you can flip a coin for for all i care so obviously you had a 22 year career as you said what's like the toughest fight mm -hmm. you've ever had or like your best opponents i don't know <laughs> uh, like tech I, I don't know how to put that yeah. question to be honest yeah. Yeah, that's always that's always a tough one to answer. I mean, the the toughest fight ever is is the person standing in the mirror for me. You know, yeah. it's like everything else is is easy once you can beat that person. Uh, I've had s just so many really amazing and really incredibly tough fights, and all were all were very different. Um, Sanchai was, you know, he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. So that's always the one that I point to. But even that one was. It, it was so different because I was that was at such a high level and I was so dialed in mentally and emotionally and physically in a lot of ways it was actually easy for me because it, it was just like automatic you know um, where some other fights maybe maybe something really horrible happened leading up to it and training and dealing with an injury um, so they're all they're all so different in, in, in a variety of ways like what were you dealing with in that moment not ne it's not necessarily just the person in front of you's ability level. Um, how much pain are you in at the time, and um, you know all all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I always point to Sanchez just because he's he's the greatest. So that was that was I think that whole the whole process, not just the fight itself. I mean, the fight itself was it just kind of everything worked the way it was supposed to work in a, in a lot of ways. But everything leading up to it and just just like dealing with with my emotions and my mentality and having to go through that that really strenuous process and just killing myself in the gym day in and day out and just continually showing up and doing the work um yeah it's it was that was a tough one but i did all the work you know so that when that's once i was in there it just kind of i was just on point you know 
Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, when I had Liam Addison on the podcast, I think he mentioned Sanchez. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he mentioned Sanchez as well because he's fought him three times, hasn't he? I think straight away yeah. that was the first person that comes to mind with him. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Liam and I were s- scheduled to fight a few times and it just it f- kind of fell through. And it, it was always that thing where, like, we always wanted to fight each other, but it's like just because you want to fight someone doesn't mean <laughs> it always works out. Yeah. Like, he had a fight and then, like, I didn't have a fight and then I'd have a fight and then he didn't have a fight. And him being in England and me being here and trying to coordinate that. And it, it was, it's probably the, just the one fight that, that never happened that I, that I wish would have happened. But, I, like, to see where he's at now is like, man he's it's crazy like i mean he was already that way when when i was was fighting you know he's, he'd already done so much i mean he started when he was a little yeah but but yeah it would, it would have been cool to uh for us to get in the ring together and see how that turned out as you say though i always say this timing is everything with our sports you know what i mean yeah. timing it makes the biggest difference ever you know what i mean and everything has to happen at the right time for it to have the greatest fight you know what i mean where as you know now it happens too much in boxing. People fight five years after they should and it doesn't happen when it should. That's what I think is great about MMA. The fights what the people want to see are the fights what happen. Yeah, 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 it is. You know, and, and unfortunately, it's it's not as easy as just like, oh, this fight should happen and it will. There, there's so much that goes into it. You know, it's like both fighters need to want it to happen. Both promotional companies need to want it to happen both you know there's a lot there's so many factors that go into it if, if it was like a video game we could just be like put these two people together right now and, and see what happened and they're both in their prime and everything that'd be great but that that's not the way it goes yeah as you say there's so much politics involved when it comes to boxing i, I couldn't even couldn't yeah, even yeah. get started when it comes to boxing yeah it's, well, it's, it's pretty it's pretty horrific we touched on it then, as you say, what Liam's doing now. What do you think of this one FC with the Muay Thai with four ounce gloves on? You know what I mean? Would you have loved to have done that yourself? Yeah, you know, ironically, um, so John Wayne Parr actually was the person who started that. Um, he had, it was called Cage Muay Thai. So he started this promotion, geez, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe like 10 years ago. Um, and I was supposed to be his, I think it was his, I don't know if it was his first or second um uh, card that he ever did. I was supposed to do that, and that's when I think I think that's when I blew my knee out. So I was supposed to fight uh, Michael Tomahawk Thompson from Australia. We did end up fighting eventually, and that's what I won my world title off of. But um, yeah, I never I never got to do it. And I, that was always something I wanted to do. But again, it was like if fights are coming up, I'm going to take the fights. I can't say, oh, I'm going to take this fight in Australia. Uh, you know, unknown thing. You know, it's it's like, especially in Muay Thai, you just got to take what, what's there because you never know. You know, it's like you can't, you can't uh, cancel one fight and think, oh, this one's going to work out. Like, you don't know what that's going to happen. It's not, they're not, it's not that prevalent, you know, so it, you, you couldn't really risk passing up an opportunity that's right in front of you. Um, so that, that was kind of why that never really panned out and, but uh, that was something I did always want to do. Uh, I just never got the opportunity to, and, and timing wise, it never worked. But I, I think it's really great, you know, I th- especially what One FC is doing. I mean, the how much they've put into the sport, um, how much promotion they've done. I was actually over there um, in uh, Thailand two years ago when they had their first show out there, and it was it was incredible. It, re- it reminded me of the uh, the old Pride days. You know, they had the fireworks and every the production value was just it was unreal. I could not believe how amazing it was, and to see what they've been able to do and how they've kept progressing and progressing and building, and uh, I think it's great. You know, it's it's clearly a it's a different thing than Muay Thai with. Uh, boxing gloves on it's it's a different it's a different sport i mean you change one thing you re- you really change everything so it's not for everybody and um but i i like to i like to see it i, I like to i like to watch it you know it's um, a lot of a lot of people i know they they fight in it too so i think it's great i think it's great i think it's always great to have a, another thing come up because it it it, it it gives that competition, you know. It's like it's like with the the U the UFC. It's like they don't really have any competition, so they don't have anyone that's like, oh, we're we're building up too. And, yeah, you, know, you got to keep yourself on point. It's when you have that kind of monopoly over, over anything, it can it can kind of limit a lot a lot of people's growth because of that, unfortunately. And it gives you a lot more control over over fighters and over over a lot of these aspects. So anytime something else comes up, I, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I think it's good for everybody. Competition is always good for for us all. Yeah, like, I, 
because you said it before, I wanted to touch on it. Like I always say how tough of a sport my tie is, but you're just so underpaid. Like it's <laughs> it's a travesty how much yeah, you're underpaid, bad. lad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, you know, that was that was one of the that was always tough for me when I was coming up because all the a lot, so many of the people I was training alongside of they were all fighting in the UFC they were fighting in Pride a, a lot of them were, were doing the MMA thing and they're always like why don't you come do MMA why don't you come do MMA like we can get you money we can get you fight especially when I wasn't getting any fights you know I had a really long long period of time where I just could not get a fight and they're just like why don't you switch over and and for myself it was one of those things where. I never wanted to do, to do both. It's like, if I'm going to do MMA, I'm going to stop doing Muay Thai and I'm going to give everything that I have to this sport. And I just, I wasn't, I couldn't give up this thing that I love so much. You know, there was a point when I was like, all right, this was going into, uh, I think it was 2009. Uh, you know, at a long period of time, I couldn't get any fights. It's like, all right, I made it my New Year's resolution. I was like, I'm going to give Muay Thai one more year. And if things don't pick up, I'm going to completely switch over to MMA and I'm going to be the best damn MMA fighter I can be, you know. Uh, fortunately, like a week after New Year's, I got a call for, to fight for a title and then everything kind of progressed from there. But that was always the thing that was that was like pulling at me. But all, it was also the thing where I was like, if I give up, if I stop doing this, who's, who's going to help the sport grow you know it was there was very few people really really pushing the envelope when it came to the sport and it's like just because things aren't i'm not getting paid and <laughs> i'm losing money even doing this you know it's it was like i want to leave this sport better than where i found it you know it's, it, if if i don't do it i'm passing that responsibility off to the next generation now they got to work that much harder because i was like oh i'm gonna go over here where i can make some money um so i, I took it as a kind of a responsibility it's like somebody's got to do this and i love to do this anyway so i guess it's gonna be me like uh, as i uh, with that muay thai lad the amount of injuries you must get was literally like the leg kicks I've, as i say i've four thai and after one of the fights mm -hmm. I, I couldn't walk for like five days and yeah. that's just standard muay thai <laughs> yeah it's pretty rough it's pretty rough man um yeah, I think they're they're ex obviously we're extremely underpaid, but I there's part of me that there's 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 good to that too because it's people aren't drawn to the money aspect of it. You're only doing this because you love it, you know. And yeah. that was that was the thing when I started was you knew every single person in the gym, every single person you fought, every single person that was even involved in the sport. The only reason they do this is because they love it so much. That's why they do it. But as things do progress, then it starts getting a little bit murky in those waters. Some people are doing, especially now with like social media and everything, it's like people are just doing this. So how, how they look on their Instagram or how people view them. And, you know, unfortunately with the progression that that comes with it, you know, with, with money and, and with, with views and everything that side, of, that sides come with it, but that, but that's with everything, you know, it's not to say those things aren't there on a small scale because they definitely are. It's just not as prev or it's not as uh, visible as it is once things get bigger. But I always feel like everything's the same, whether it's on a small scale or a big scale, because you're dealing with uh, human nature. You know, there's going to be a percentage of people that are doing this uh, that are die hard. They're going to do this no matter what. You're going to do. There's a percentage of people that are only doing this because of the way that it looks, the way that they're viewed, uh, the way their social media or the way their their family friends view them, and then. Um, and, the, or, and that's the other end of the spectrum. And then you're going to have everybody in between that's maybe just doing it for fun and doing the other thing. So I always feel like that percentage of people who really are doing this for, for the, the passion and the desire and because they really love the sport so much, that percentage of people is the same, whether it's uh, it's just starting out or whether it's, you know, like UFC level. You know, there's still a certain percentage of people who are just diehard fighters you know passionate and, and this is what they love to do and then there's fighters that are doing this just because you know they're getting paid good or you know they're, they're getting views on television but but who's who's going to still do this if you took all that away you know it's like those are the people that I, I like to be around and i like to train with and but you know as i said that that's going to be the same percentage of people on a small scale or bigger there just might be more of them is all but the percentage is always going to be the same yeah you're right there because everyone i know does Muay Thai, they love Muay Thai, you know what I mean? And it's it's a part of their soul, it's a part of their life, you yeah. know what I mean? And 
you see, uh, there's with MMA, it's different now, as you say, because it's more mainstream. People just flutter about with it. Oh, I'll have a little go, have a little go. But in it's Muay Thai gym, yeah. lad, everyone is just obsessed with Muay Thai. It's brilliant to see. I was lucky enough yeah, yeah. that I never fought professional because I never got elbowed. <laughs> Luckily enough, we had elbow <laughs> pads on <laughs> and touch wood, oh, but yeah. I've never, I've never been cut. But I know for a fact, oh, yeah. if I ever fought professional Muay Thai, I would have had gashes yeah, there and everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I fortunately heal heal up like Wolverine, but my my face has been just split the hell. I've had like something like two hundred something stitches in my face over throughout my career and. Yeah, it's definitely it's the it's the one thing that really separates the sport. You know, it's it's that that elbow aspect. Uh, you know, I, and I think a lot of that too is because in in MMA, it, it's not trained as much. I think as things progress, people will start understanding it a little bit better and in, in, in training in Muay Thai a little bit more and having high level Muay Thai trainers work with them because I do think it's a huge uh, unused thing in in MMA, I, I, it's like, I, it just blows my mind when I see people in the clinch and they're punching each other. I'm like, why are you punching this person? Yeah. <laughs> like, why aren't you elbowing? <laughs> um, but I, I do understand like why that is because the, you know, there's very few high level uh, Muay Thai fighters really training people. A lot of it is a lot of kickboxer, a lot of kickboxing, you know, it comes into it. And, and there's a lot of really good things about that because you need a lot of the the movement and the numbers and stuff. But I think, you know, once once some of these guys uh, and girls start getting some really high level Muay Thai training, I think it's going to change the game a lot. Well, yeah, you touched on it there. So MMA, what would you, what would you say is like the best Muay Thai move? incorporated into MMA or like not even one that you've seen you might have seen one brilliantly like my teammate Molly done a beautiful spin and back elbow knockout which is proper Muay Thai-esque but what's like a move what yeah. you think doesn't get used in MMA what would be perfect from Muay Thai uh, well yeah just like we were talking about the, el- the elbows in, in the clinch is, I think is one of the greatest things uh, about Muay Thai because you do get that that aspect of other martial arts incorporated in the art you know you get the grappling aspect you know it's like the first time i ever did jujitsu and, and judo these people were just like blown away at how i was able to hang with them because so much of that is in the the clinch that we do and in in that that work that we do it's it's a lot of the same fundamental things that you're working on when it comes to grappling you know whether it's standing or whether you're on the ground there's so much of that that can be used as well as learning how to strike from that distance you know it tends to be one or the other you're either wrestling or you're striking you know there's very there's very few that are actually striking and 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 kneeing and um you know doing doing sweeps and stuff i mean matt brown is really good at that because because he did so much uh muay thai training and and, you know we worked together a lot and he worked with a lot of really really great uh thai boxers you know it's like that ability to fight in the clinch to use the elbows to use the sweeps um, to use the knees properly, uh, that that is, I think, one of the one of the uh, biggest things that's not being utilized when it comes to MMA, and I think that will be the the thing that starts to kind of progress the sport in a lot of ways. That aspect of it. Yeah, I completely understand what you're saying there because we've got a young lad in our gym called Luke Riley, and he was fighting Muay Thai when he was like six, seven, eight years old, and in stadiums yeah. in Thailand. And then now he's got into MMA a couple of years ago, and he's he's four and zero with four knockouts, and a lot of yeah. it, like two yeah. or two of his knockouts, I think, and knees in the clinch, and then elbows from there. You know what I mean? And he's yeah. u- utilizing it brilliantly. Like if you look, like go and look at some of his fights on Fight Pass, yeah, his knees and his elbows are, are beautiful. I mean, he's only young, yeah. as I say. And I think like he's only twenty three. Oh yeah, it's like when you when you get kneed by somebody that knows how to do them in that close distance, it's. F- man <laughs> it, it's, it's very it's very different it's very different than just 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 a normal knee uh the kicks as well you know having those dynamic kicks knowing knowing distance uh placement um you know where where's safe and where's not safe to kick particularly when it comes to catching kicks and takedowns and that kind of thing um there's so much of that you learn through tie boxing uh, that is really beneficial and applicable to to uh mma I, i'm just like shocked at that it's taken so long for that to finally start being utilized a little bit more but i also understand why because there's very few people who understand the sport for one 
you know, there's only so many high level Thai boxers in the world. You know, it's like where where are you going to get this training at? And a lot of a lot of the training, unfortunately, around the world is, is a lot more kickboxing that they just throw elbows sometimes. You know, it's 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 like uh, it's like martial arts gyms. They they just put Muay Thai on the on the on the sign, <laughs> yeah. but they don't know what the f- they're doing. I know exactly what you mean there because his distance management is ridiculous. I'll go to kick him and he'll he'll just move his yeah. knee out the way a slightest bit and then kick me back and by the time my legs hits the floor again, I've got a toe marks on this on my thigh and I'm just like, I'm taking you down now. <laughs> but with yeah, the um, like I, I'd, I'd take some people down too and I, I don't yeah. know how to do that but there's definitely people I would take down for sure. Something I did want to ask you about something we I, I I also this is another thing I also asked Liam Anderson about because you see it a lot in MMA now the calf kick like you don't really see yeah. it utilized in Muay Thai do you and like it's it's ending fights so in the MMA thing about now the calf kick is yeah the th- people what people don't really understand about that is you can only really get away with that if they're standing not as squared up. So if you're standing squared up, you're going to be kicking people straight in their shin. Whereas uh, MMA, people, people tend to stand a little bit more uh, bladed where kind of both feet are going in the same direction uh, as opposed to both going off at a 45. Like if you try to calf kick me, you're going to kick me right in the shin. You're going to break your foot. It's, or you're going to have to create an angle to get to that side of my calf where it's the soft side. But a lot of people stand in a way where it's right there. You know, it's right there for the kick. It's right there for the sweep. Uh, they have to constantly make that uh, adjustment to the outside in order to check properly or in order to uh, catch it on the, the front of their leg properly. So it, it's ve- you guys just make it easy to do because of the way that you're standing. And that's such a, a big factor of it. And that's why you don't see it that much um, in Muay Thai. Although, I mean, th- this has been around for <laughs> thousands of years, you know, the, the calf kick and everything. It's something that's done and it's something that I'm con- I will always look for. I mean, that's how I set up a lot of my sweeps and a lot of my leg kicks is just the angle of that foot. If it's turned in a little bit, I know that I can hit that and I don't even have to make an adjustment. Um, but most people, especially ones that, that do tie boxing, they kind of understand that a little bit more so, and that they understand those angles a little bit more. So that's why you don't see it that much, but it definitely, it's utilized a lot. It's just it became such a big thing in MMA because it is that much easier to do when someone's standing a little bit differently. But as soon as people start recognizing that, that's why I'm like, how do you not know this? But, you know, a lot of that comes from the lack of the lack of Thai Thai instruction. You know, it's like why why would you know that unless you've dealt with that before? And you know, I would tell everyone like, look for that shit. Look at the angle of their foot. Just blast the out of that leg. Blast. The out of that calf because because they're not going to be able to uh, make that adjustment yeah well perfect perfect response because that is exactly what Liam said Liam said it's because of your stance it's uh, a oh, yeah. <laughs> so obviously the Muay Thai yeah. fighters know what they're talking about but I can't let you go without yeah. talking yeah. about Thailand like I, I love Thailand know what I mean and yeah. I've never actually went and done yeah. a camp there know what I mean I've never actually went and done a camp there what what's that right. like well, yeah, so it's, it is tough, especially if you're an MMA fighter, because you still need to get all your training in. You, know, you can't go over there for uh, six, eight weeks and just do stand-up. Now, all of a sudden, you've got all these kind of bad habits of being a stand-up fighter, and you've, you've lost your, your ground game. But, um, it, yeah, it's just, it's just night and day different than any – it's like no matter how much you do – you know, and I, I don't want to say that the it's that different. It's just they're – their mindset and their mentality is just ingrained in them. You know, they start this when they're children. I mean, it's, it's their, it's their art. It's their national sport. You feel it when you walk into a gym, you know, it's like every single person in that gym love, might not even necessarily love what they're doing. Cause a lot of people are doing this because it's, it's money for them. It's not a, uh, nobody's doing this for fun over there you know nobody's doing this just to train and learn martial arts they're either doing this to be a fighter and to make money or they're not doing it at all so i think that um you know it's it's that mindset when you're in a gym like that everyone in here is there for that reason it it, that alone just changes so much of the game the intensity of it the the drive and and the, the the seriousness of it you know it's not uh no one's in there like screwing around around and playing games like where everyone's in there to work everyone's in there to train their ass off 
And that's like, even for myself, like I could get that kind of, I can train that way here, but just to be there and to be immersed in that culture and to be immersed uh, with other fighters that are all there. Like I'm not there with people who are um, just doing this uh, for a workout and then they're leaving. Everybody that's surrounding me is here to be the best fighter that they can be. That's one of the, I'd say the biggest aspects of being over there um, it is just that, that mentality and that mindset is, is, is everything. Yeah, because even, there's even kids there, isn't there, what are like eight, nine, ten years old, what are fighting four times a month and they're, they're, they're bread earner for the family. <laughs> and you're just it's like, whoa, imagine, you'd get done for uh, child abuse if that was in the Western world. <laughs> without question, without question. Yeah, it's like in the, uh, when I first went over there, um, you know, they start you out. I mean, I was 20, what was I, 27 the first time I went over there. They, they start you out training with like the little 12-year-old kids. <laughs> And we're like, oh man, these are kids, and then they grab you, and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> it just like blows your mind with that, like you know, it's like you think you know what you're doing, you think you you're strong, you think you have balance, and then you start working with like a child that's been doing this for ten years already, and it really, it just shows you the levels of the game, you know, and it's 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 either gonna motivate you or it's gonna make you want to quit. <laughs> Yeah, I've, uh, as I say, I've been to Thailand and I've the camp there and I went to a gym and done a little bit of Muay Thai and I had a heartbeat sensor on mm -hmm. to track my workout and oh, yeah. the coach put me in with one of the young lads at the end and I'd done like a few rounds of sparring with him and every round he teeped the heartbeat monitor off mm -hmm. my chest. Every round, just teep <laughs> and it was just gone. I was thinking, I'll use my hands here and every yeah. time I stepped in to use my hands, he'd just teep me, teep me, teep me. I'd be like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it really blows your mind because you feel that way. You're like, oh, I can, I can just hit him, but like you can't. You yeah, just can't, you just can't get there. the distance. Like, there's no way to get there. It's, it's maddening. And then their ability to kick. You know, when you get kicked by someone that's been doing this their whole life, it like, I didn't know you could kick like that. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. You know, to be able to have that kind of power. Um, in ability uh, and again it's it's either very motivational or makes you want to give up but I think that's the best thing in the world is like throw yourself in the fire and if this is really where you want to be you're gonna you're gonna get better or you're gonna learn real quick that you don't want to do this yeah brilliant I know what before we move on to the Ash Paddy segments I have to ask you what are you up to now and you, you're writing a book aren't you yeah well I've written two books um, I'm, I've been working on my autobiography for like like 10 years now it's been one it's been a really long process but it's also something it's not like i have a deadline or anything so i want yeah. to make sure it's it's the way that I, that i want it and it's good and um i don't want to i don't want to rush it out just because i want i want to get it out there like i, I want to be you know i look at my writing just like i look at my fighting like i want it to be good for me i need to be proud of it i don't really like i hope people like it but if yeah. i don't like it then i don't really give a what other people think about it um so yeah that's um that's something i've always been working on it was it was really difficult to do um um the, while i was leading into my uh, retirement fight because i couldn't let anything else distract me while i was i was like i knew that was going to be my last fight you know my retirement fight last june and um you know, I had to I had to put everything else on hold, uh, particularly when the world was as crazy it was and training was as difficult as it was. It was like I, I can't even put any time and energy into anything else but but this fight and getting ready for this. So I kind of I kind of put everything on hold, and then after I had my fight, I kind of took a took about a month to just. I just stopped doing everything. It's like, I need a complete separation from all this. I need to just step back and kind of reset my brain to this new new place I'm in. And then it's like, once I did that, I'm like, all right, well, bare minimum, I got to I gotta move every day. You know, <laughs> I got to move my body. So let, let's just start there. And then once I started moving a little bit, it's like, all right, I want to start hitting the bag a little bit. And then I got back into like, all right, now I'm, I'm actually, I still train every day. I still, you know, spar when I can. And I tr we're tr we've been traveling so much that... Um, that's made that a little bit difficult, but it's also been really great because I everywhere we go, I just hit up a gym like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in town, you know, I'll, I'll teach at their gyms, I'll teach seminars, I'll, I'll move around with uh, wh whoever their fighters are. So it's been really great because it's kind of uh, reignited that that passion like when I started, you know, and like seeing all these, you know, it's like in the States, there's there's like maybe a handful of like really good places to train when it comes to Muay Thai so being able to go to these places that just don't have anything 
you know, and to see their like desire and their passion to want to get better, even if they're just starting out, that's been, it's been pretty great. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have that kind of thing where like, I can go wherever I want and teach anywhere I show up and, you know, just call a gym and be like, Hey, I'm in town. Like, oh shit, really? And then I, you know, I, I get training and you know, it's, it's been cool. It's been fun. So yeah, we've been traveling around a lot where I'm actually, we're currently in Montana, which is where we're going to move. So we're up here right now looking for a place um, and uh, hopefully we'll be up here permanently next month. Nice. Great stuff. Well, yeah, as I say, I do a little segment at the end of the podcast where it's called Ask Paddy. And I have me subscribers and the people who watch me podcast and stuff. The questions for you, like, they're not for me. Some okay. of them are for both. Some of them are for both of us. Oh, but, oh okay, great. I thought I was going to have to ask you questions. No, <laughs> someone else thought that last week. I'm going to have to make this uh, make this a little bit easier for the guest. Yeah, well, ask the guest basically. So uh, the should be, first it should be have Patty ask you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but we're going to change that, Dave. Don't worry. That, I mean, Kevin, that's going to get changed. But um, so right. first one. James Nichol, can you talk about a losing streak you've been through in your fight career and how you overcame it? Yeah, yeah, I can actually talk about one of the most difficult ones for me. So um, I lost, so I had a rematch with Tetsuya Yamato from Japan and I lost my line fight world title to him. Then my next fight, so I got I got knocked out twice in a row. Well, I got stopped twice in a row. I don't want to say I got knocked out. <laughs> I got stopped with it, both once with an elbow, once with a flying knee to the face. But I lost both those fights, you know, by stoppage. And I think I think they were both in the first and second round. And this was, you know, this was only five years ago. So I'd already done so much and accomplished so much, and you know, basically done everything I could possibly want to do in this sport. And it was one of those things where it's like am I done? Should, do I need to stop now? You know, do I not have the ability to do this anymore? Cause you know, from day one, I always knew I'm probably always going to love this. There's not going to be a point when I don't love this anymore. So what are my um, requirements to keep fighting? One, do I still love this? Do I still have the ability to do this? Am I still progressing or, or am I getting worse? Um, so that was, a, that became a question in my mind is like, maybe I can't do this anymore. Maybe I can't take this anymore. Maybe, maybe I've been hit in the head too many times. And I, you know, eventually you can only take so many shots in your life and nobody knows what that number is. Everybody's different. You know, I started, I was questioning whether that was the case, you know, maybe, maybe I'm done, maybe I'm finished. And, uh, you know, I got, I finally, uh, you know, I had to take a step back and be like, all right, well, I do still love this, so I'm going to keep training. And I did still feel, I felt, I still felt really sharp in the gym, you know, and I felt like I was constant, I was still progressing, you know, I was still motivated and everything. So um, I had to, I had to kind of, I was like, the only way I'm going to find this out is by having another fight because you, you can only figure out so much in the gym, you know, and that was, that was really tough for me mentally and emotionally, like, breaking through that fear and that doubt it was because like this is this is what I love so much you know and it's like maybe I can't do this anymore but I'm never gonna know unless I I put myself in there and find out you know it's like I, I can say that right now on the outside like oh I can't do this I have all these doubts um but I had to be willing to to put myself into the fire and um, yeah, it was it was it was tough going into that fight. Uh, I ended up knocking the guy out in the second round, and it was just like, you know, my buddy uh, Gaston, who I trained with, I was like, man, I was like, maybe I can't do this. And he was like, he was like, you're not done yet. He's like, you still got some more in you. And I, I, he said that to me right before I walked out from my fight, and that that really stuck with me. And then and then I ended up knocking him out, and he fought on the card as well. But that that was hard. That was hard. And it always is that that mental side of it, you know, when you lose. Something that I always looked at was this guy Nong Oh, who's the champion Muay Thai, one uh, uh, FC champion. He went on like a two-year losing streak when he was younger, and he retired actually uh, because of it. And, and then to see where he's at now, because he was like, it, you know, it's like a fight. And I mean, anything can happen in a fight, as you know. Like just because you're losing doesn't mean you're, you're getting worse. Sometimes just bad happens. You know, you could you could bad could happen every time even though you're killing it in the gym and everything's progressing and you're doing great it's one of those things you just got to make that decision like what am i willing to go through what am i what cost am i willing to pay to do this and if you're willing to do it then 
that's the only way to really find out it is to keep doing it and to keep moving forward. And But only you can decide that because everyone around you is going to say good things or bad things. And that only matters so much. You know, it's great when everyone's like, yeah, you, you're great and you're, you're fabulous. You should keep doing this forever. But you're the one that has to decide whether this is worth it or not. And, and it's very important to, to, to know that in yourself because you're also the one that's going to pay the price that it comes with. Well, Lad, brilliant answer. Thank you again. This after us talking about setbacks and stuff there, I think that we lead us on to this question perfectly on some of the stuff we've talked about today. Uh, from PJ, a question from someone who's been struggling with substance abuse over the years. How do you handle mental setbacks when training and what pushes you on every day in life? Yeah, that that's always that's always the biggest battle, you know. For myself, you know, I, I try to I try to simplify all these questions in my mind. Um, it's like I put things in the you're either getting better, or you're getting worse context, and that that always kept me from kind of falling back into those those bad habits. You know, it's like I know where that path leads. It, it's not going to lead anywhere good. You know that it doesn't make it any easier, but when you simplify it, you know, it's either you're either left or right. There's no in between. You know, you're either going to do this <laughs> no matter what it costs, no matter what it feels like, no matter how great it is, or you're going to go this way. And you know, most of us know where that direction leads. So for myself, I think it's like when you can simplify it in that regard, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it easier, but your mind can, can understand that, that that's, there's a choice to make. You're going to go in one direction or the other. And once you can do that, it does make it simpler in the, the way that it, it, uh, uh, um, it, it, not easier, it makes it simpler. You know, it's never going to be easy, obviously. Uh, but when you can simplify it in your mind and understand uh, which, which, which direction each choice comes with, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter how difficult this is, I know what that direction is going to bring me. So I'm going to go this way. And you have, you just, it really is, you just have to make that choice. It doesn't matter how much it sucks it doesn't matter how nervous you are you know it's like that's something that again that you you think on the outside you you view people as as, as these really brave fighters or whoever and you think that they don't they don't deal with the same kind of immersion um, emotional uh, difficulties and doubts and you know it's once you actually talk to talk to other fighters and be around them you're like oh my gosh like a lot of fighters are really really scared <laughs> a lot of the time you know <laughs> but it's like you you have to decide to move forward. It's not. It's not a question of whether you're scared or not. You, you got. You understand that there's a decision you get to make, regardless of what it feels like. You make a decision. I'm going forward. I don't care how this feels. I don't care how scared I am. I don't care how many doubts I have. I don't care how many people I have telling me that I'm going to fail. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to find out for myself. Well, there you go, PJ. Lovely answer for you there. Uh, one or two more for you, and we'll. I'll. I'll give you your night your day back sorry kev but um no problem man i've enjoyed this i can't say this name i hate it when people have usernames that you can't say you know what i mean it's k-a-m-g-f-x-a cam i don't know how you say it but anyway congratulations on your success paddy and kevin as as a muay thai champion what kind of kicking drills can you share to strengthen your shin and legs i see videos of people kicking banana trees now this is something that even i want to listen to i want to know what your recommendations are for this <laughs> so the best thing for for myself and i think i think the thing that people need to do like you just what you want is a really hard bag you know i make i make sandbags i, I take the stuffing out and fill them with sand and you know, a mixture of the two and the thing is, you want something that you can do every single day. You know, you see a lot of people that are like bashing their shins in with bottles and stuff. And like, yeah, like, there's part of that that it's great because you are deadening your shins. But the problem with that is you're not strengthening your bone at all. So you're not getting the bone density that you need. And that's actually why you see a lot of people get their shins snapped in half because on the outside, they feel like they're really strong, but their their bone's not strong enough. So getting stronger, getting... Uh, um, denser shins it's it's the same process for everything you got to start small progressively build up you got to do just enough to where you can do it again the next day you know like so i had a i had a sandbag that i kick at, at the end of, of every day however many times you know and and then 
yeah, it's going to cause damage and it's going to cause pain, but I can do it again the next day. So you don't want to do so much that you can't do it the next day, you know, and it's not something people think they can like skip to the end of this process. Like it's going to happen tomorrow. Like all of a sudden I'm going to be able to kick these metal poles over there. You know what I mean? Like that's never going to happen. <laughs> so you got to continually build up slowly to go do a little bit more, go a little bit harder, cause yourself a little bit more pain. And one, your, your mind learns how to deal with that pain. You know, and, and, and you stop holding back as much because you have that confidence in your ability level. And that's why it's also so important to strengthen through kicking because you need to get that those repetitions of the kicks. Whereas if you're just whacking yourself, you're not you're not learning how to kick. You know, you're just bashing yourself in the shin. You know, that's that's not so great. So I, I would say a sandbag or, or a really hard bag is one of the best things you can do because you can just sit that there, take your time whack the shit out of it day in and day out and, um, you know, start going a little bit harder, doing a little bit more. And it, it is one of those things you have to do f- kind of forever because, you know, as soon as you stop, like, that stuff starts coming back. Like, like I can't really, I mean, I can, but <laughs> it's going to hurt a little bit. Like, your nerves start coming back. You know, that you're not, it's not like you're, you're not going to be, your bones aren't going to have that density anymore, but you'll start getting those nerves a little bit back. So it's, it's that repetition that you need um, – just like any other thing you want to get good at, it's there's a process to it. And you can't rush the process. And if you do, you're going to cause yourself some injuries and problems. Yeah, the one I've heard in the past is the rolling pin down the shin. But as you say, yeah. that would just kill yeah, the same, nerve endings and wouldn't make, your, wouldn't make your bones stronger. Yeah, it's it's. I would say you could use that in addition to it. You wouldn't want to just do that. Yeah, I you understand. Know, if you want to do that extra so that way you're not kicking. Like, you have to be kicking stuff because you need that that impact you know that impact of something hard we're just just rolling it is only going to kind of hit the surface level yeah you know well, well we've got a great question here from a big fan of yours called pete my favorite muay, muay thai fighter my question is what do you believe makes a champion i struggle with the training regime i am putting myself through as of now and almost always last to finished run circuit swims i pride myself in my heart but often feel that is not enough insight into what you believe separates the champion from everyone else in any endeavor in life would be greatly appreciated it's a big question as well like put me on the spot here <laughs> yeah put you right on the spot with the spotlight on you yeah well you know when it comes to, i mean when it comes to all of us all of us are going to have uh different ability levels different different positives and different negatives everyone's got this uh, huge spectrum that we have to work on it's not just one thing that makes somebody great i mean at the core of anything that you want to be good at you have to have um, the heart for it and, and the, the desire for it because if you're not willing to push you have to be willing to push through all those failures all those times of of doubt and Uh, you know, that was something for myself is like, I wasn't like the most athletically gifted person. I definitely wasn't the biggest or strongest person. I was extremely like skinny and frail. And that that was something that I always, you know, that always kept me from doing this was because of that, because I wasn't this like big, strong, like a fighter person that I looked at, you know, that, that was, but I think it was my, my mindset and my mentality was I'm willing to go through and deal with and, and deal with more pain, more difficulty, more failure and losses. I will never, ever, ever give up. And just that mindset alone, I think, helped me win so many of my fights because people knew that they couldn't break me. I knew that I would never break. I knew that I would never give up on anything, any any workout, any fight, any amount of pain, any amount of difficulty. And if you have that, that will overcome so much of your ability level. Like you see a lot of people, particularly when they start out, that is where natural ability really helps people progress very quickly. And that can be really uh, disheartening to a lot of people because maybe, maybe you're losing a lot of your fights. But a lot of those people, they're, they're not developing the other aspects of their game that they need to because they have so much natural ability. That's where you got somebody that, that's willing to work really hard regardless. That's, I'll go with them all day, all night because I know that eventually in the long run, they're going to make it out on top. You know, this is a this is a marathon, it's not a sprint. You got to you just got to keep grinding, you got to keep getting better. You got to be willing to put in the work. And there's so many factors that go into being good at this. It's not just 
physical ability. It's not just mental ability. You know, it's, it's the whole gamut. And there's always ways to overcome and to strengthen one aspect if you're, if you're weak over here. Like maybe I'm not physically strong, but I can be mentally stronger. Uh, I, can be, I can be faster. I can be emotionally stronger. You know, it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole process there. And there, there's, there's always pieces that can overcome weaknesses over here. And you can always help those get better anyway. So it, it can be very easy to look at someone and be like, oh, well, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, you know, but, but there, are there ways to get better at that? Okay, do that. Are there, or are there ways to overcompensate in some other aspect of, of the, your game, of your life, whatever that may be? Like, I'm willing to outwork anybody. I don't care how long you've been doing this. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outwork you because I'm never going to give up. You know, and I'm willing, to, I'm willing to dive into the deep end and swim in the sharks because cause I know I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna be, I'm, I'm never going to give up and I'm going to be able to get through this. So there's always ways to overcome whatever our limitations are. You just got to be willing to go through and, and do the work and to deal with that kind of stuff. So um, that's what I would say. Your, your, your heart has to be the biggest thing out of anything. And that's what Pete said the ad. So he, he smashed it. He's ready. He's just got it up here, isn't it? I always say, I think fighting and training is like 80% mental. You know what I mean? Obviously, you've got to have the body, but it's 80% mental. You've got to have everything up here before you, you get everything else going. But Kev, I want to yeah, thank yeah, you very much for your time. Uh, I know we've talked a little hour out of your day there, so thank you very much. But is there, tell everyone about your social medias, anywhere to follow, is there anything you want to promote? Uh, but obviously, as you say, you're writing, you've got two books out, so if you want to promote them, here's, here's you go. Yeah, for sure, man. First, thank you so much for having me on. This has been really great. I, I really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, people, uh, my website is thesoulassassin.com. Uh, my social media, unfortunately, I'm basically shadow banned on everything, so that makes it. Oh, really meet your mate, lad. My my <laughs> my Instagram and my uh, my Twitter are dasoulassassin with a D A. So you can you can follow me on there, but you can't tag me, and a lot of times you can't even find me because of the yeah uh, everything that's going on in the world. I got I got pretty shut down as everything last year but yeah my, my website uh the soul assassin.com that my books are on there all, all my gear and stuff and uh i'm pretty easy to find if you just look me up well yeah as i say thank you very much for coming on it's uh, it's been my pleasure having you on the podcast it really has so hopefully when i'm back in america we get a chance to meet up in person lad be an absolute pleasure yeah, to meet you in person that'd be great man for sure 100 we'll percent. so once again, people, that is another episode of Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy in the bag. See you next week. <laughs>